Traveling the world has been the most amazing experience I've ever had in my entire life. And today, I want to share with you nine reasons why traveling solo is good for the soul. Number one. Just like a traditional vacation, solo traveling can be used as a time to simply relax and unwind and recharge. Traveling solo can mean a variety of different things to different people. And if you're stressed at work and you need time to simply relax, awesome, go solo traveling. For the time that you're out traveling, there's no boss breathing down your neck, there's no deadlines, there's no crazy reports that you need to make, there's no sitting behind a desk and, and doing everything that the company tells you to do. Just stop for a minute and do the things that you want to do. If you want to sit on a beach with your feet up and a drink in your hand, awesome, go do it. If you want to go jump out of a plane in a foreign country, awesome, do it. Like, there's no stopping you. Just go out and do something that will get your mind off your current work lifestyle and do something that will excite you and, and recharge you. Number two, the feeling of freedom. So what does it feel like to not have deadlines or not have a boss breathing down your neck or, or deal with angry customers? Do you remember what it feels like to simply sleep in if you want to sleep in? Many of us have forgotten what it feels like to simply be free. And let me tell you, the feeling of being free, free from a job, free from the obligations of society, free from the stress of just being plugged into society. I mean, the feeling of being away from all of that is unbelievable. And really the first time I had this experience was when I started solo traveling. Sure, I've been on vacation a couple of times and traveled here or there, but nothing was as good as solo traveling and making all of the decisions by myself and just being free from anyone or anything that is telling me to do something else. That feeling is just unsurpassable. Number three, meeting new people and making friends. This is literally my favorite part about traveling the world. To simply walk in multiple countries and meet different people every day is one of the coolest things ever. I get to meet people who have a completely different mindset, they have a completely different background, who follow different values and are part of a completely different culture and simply speak with them and ask tons of different questions. This to me is so amazing. I have learned so much from so many different people about so many different countries while I've been on the road. And it's really just amazing to hear different perspectives from different people. I have met thousands and thousands of people along my journey and I can say that I've met some of the coolest people ever and I even am in contact with many of them still today. Number four, learning about different cultures and perspectives is such a fun thing. There are so many different people from so many different countries who have so many different backgrounds and because of this, their logic and ideology is completely different than yours and mine. The way they think about a family is different than the way I think about a family. The way they think about a job is completely different than the way that I may think about a job. The way they think about raising their children can be a completely different way than we think about it. Now instead of taking these differences and using them as a way to split us apart, I try to focus on these differences as a way to bring us closer together. I want to learn about the differences, not because I think my ideology is better than yours. I want to learn about these differences because I think it's unbelievably interesting and it's so much fun to learn about their perspective. Sometimes this can take a little bit to get used to, especially if you visit a country with a culture that is wildly different from your own. Sometimes people do things that you would see as very rude, but in their culture, it's a sign of kindness or politeness. So you really never know what you're going to get into until you enter. Number five, getting out of your comfort zone. So being a solo traveler, you are completely in control of all of your travel plans, where you're going to go, when you're going to go, how you're going to get there, the visa process, the legalities, the money, everything about your travel is completely controlled by you and generally must be planned in advance. And while this can be extremely overwhelming at times, it is also very rewarding because you're able to force yourself outside of your comfort zone for a very long period of time, days, week, months, however long you're traveling. And you now sometimes you don't understand the culture and you do something that offends someone. Sometimes you try to speak their language and you say a word that's really, really bad and people are shocked. Sometimes you walk into the grocery store or a restaurant and everybody literally stops and stares at you because they haven't ever seen a foreigner in this area. I mean, the list goes on. Talk about getting outside of your comfort zone. Solo traveling will push you there, I promise. I have literally grown numb 
to the feeling of being in an awkward position. It's just like the new normal for me. Number six, boost your self-confidence. Now I can tell you that after traveling solo for such a long time, my self-confidence has gone up dramatically. I'm always out of my comfort zone, and because of this, I'm constantly growing, I'm constantly learning. It's just a never-ending learning process in each country. And by learning so many different new things so often, I've started to learn about my own faults. And when I learn about my own faults, I'm able to improve upon myself. And obviously, as I improve upon myself, my confidence only grows. At this point, I feel like there's almost nothing that I can't handle. It feels like I've been through so many different unique and crazy travel experiences that I'm pretty confident that whatever happens to me on the road, I can deal with it. Number seven, you will learn to improve your problem solving skills. So like I mentioned before, you will be out of your comfort zone so often. And because of this, you will learn to improve upon yourself drastically. One major area that you will start improving upon is your problem solving skills. If you enter a country and you can't speak the language and you need to get the point across to someone, what do you do? If you enter your hotel and they say no foreigners allowed, what will you do? If you enter a taxi and tell him to take you to a specific destination and you're watching your GPS and he takes you way out of the way intentionally to increase the, the fare amount, what will you do? You're trying to get a visa to go to your next country, but you need to have a friend in that country to sign a document for you to prove that you're a safe person to give you a visa to go to that country. But you don't know anyone in that country. So what do you do? Your funds are starting to get low on your traveling journey and eating out at a restaurant is getting very expensive and you need to start saving money. What will you do? Or you get caught traveling abroad during a pandemic. What do you do? These are all questions that you need to be able to answer and answer quickly. Your problem solving skills will get better and better with time. In the beginning, when all of these weird things start to happen to you, believe me, it's going to be daunting and even frustrating at times. You'll wonder, how am I going to get through these things? What should I do in this particular situation? I will tell you, after you've been on the road for a while and you've needed to handle these type of situations so frequently, eventually you will learn this problem solving process where you will start to get comfortable enough to handle handle almost any situation that is thrown at you. Number eight, I can promise you as you have started to travel the world all alone, you will learn so much about yourself. Things that you didn't even know about yourself because the reality is, is you're going to be alone quite frequently. Again, like I've said earlier, you're going to need to make a lot of decisions about a lot of different stuff very frequently, multiple times every day. And after you get through that particular situation, you will start to look back at yourself and analyze how you handled that situation. And the more you deal with these weird, strange situations, the more you will start to learn about yourself. You will start to make decisions every day that kind of tell you what type of foods you consistently like eating. You'll start to see where you like to visit more frequently. Are you visiting beaches? Are you visiting mountains? Are you staying in your hotel a lot? What are you doing? What are your habits? And eventually, the longer that you've been on the road, the more information you're going to gather about you and you're going to realize what type of person you really are. And this is very strange because these are things that you really don't think about when you're sitting at home, living your normal life in your home country. But believe me, when you start to travel the world by yourself, you will start to learn more about you. Number nine, feeling of accomplishment. How many people can say that they just left their home country and started to travel the world for a month or two months or six months or more? Probably not too many. There are a lot of challenges that come along with solo traveling. Like I mentioned before, you have to organize and plan everything. You are in control of your visas, which country you go to, which plane ticket you buy, what restaurants you visit, what tourist attraction you do or do not want to go to, what village you want to go to. Are you going to take a bus? Are you going to take a taxi? Are you going to walk? There are so many things that not only you are in control of, but so many things that you have to learn. And in every country, these things are different. The structure, the layout, the organization, the language, everything is completely different. And because of this, traveling is not easier. Those who choose to simply go on vacation and have a guided tour, that's a significantly easier way to travel, right? You simply give someone money and they organize everything for you. You arrive and then you just follow them everywhere, right? Hey, this is this building. Hey, this is this animal. Hey, here's the beach. They just show you everything and you go and touch and take a photo. And this type of traveling is, is great if that's what you want. For me, that's not my style of traveling, right? I like 
to dive in deep in the culture, be on my own, learn, make mistakes, learn from my mistakes. I don't know, I like to get my feet wet and my hands dirty. That's just the way I like to travel. And after you have traveled for a while, you realize that what you are doing is unique in this world. And the feeling of accomplishment becomes very strong. There's not too many people around the world who are doing what we are doing, solo traveling consistently. So it's kind of a unique thing. And because of that, it feels pretty cool. The feeling of accomplishment is definitely there. And if you start solo traveling, I promise you, you'll have that same feeling. So if you meet anyone and they tell you, avoid solo traveling, it's too dangerous, it's too expensive, it's too time consuming, it's too something, just literally ignore them. Here's all of the things that are positive about solo traveling. If I wanted to make sub lists and micro lists, I promise you I could talk to you for hours about the pros of solo traveling. I literally can't put into words how awesome it is to literally pick up and go to any country that I want to on planet Earth and just explore and meet local people and just be a part of the culture. It is the coolest thing like ever. I hope you found this list a little bit interesting. Thank you all for watching and remember, your time is running out. Start living. Take care.